Uh, in Sherry's talk, uh, the thing that interests me was her notion of shared intersubjective space and how she was using that. Kind of, you know, how it's coming from the outside through cyberspace and through these things. My talk is actually going to be kind of the bookend to that of the privacy of the analytic encounter. Um, so where she's describing the macrocosm, true alchemical terms, I would be de dealing with the microcosm. So as above, so as below. The one comment she made in there, I don't know if you caught it, it says, our intention here is to con uh, cultivate an ethic of empathy and responsibility towards ourselves and one another. This talk, I think you'll see, will highlight that. There's no doubt that Jung felt that the consulting room and the work that we were doing there is of uh, utmost importance. This is a quote that I found in Psychology, The Transference. So when the psychotherapist has to struggle with difficult transference problems, he can at least take comfort in these reflections. He is not just working for this particular patient, but for himself as well as his own soul. Small and invisible as this contribution may be, it is yet an opus magnum, a great work for it is accomplished in a sphere but lately visited by the Newman, these very powerful spiritual energies, where the weight of mankind's problems has settled. The ultimate questions of psychotherapy are not a private matter, they re represent a supreme responsibility. Now isn't that cool? That's, as, as, as a Jungian, this is why I'm here, right? You know, this guy could say these things. Um, the other side, I think I should probably argue, and I've uh, written in other papers, the shadow of this approach is, uh, why is it as we Jungians can't just be with people in a consulting room that we have to also feel like we're doing the great work, right? I think it's, uh, you know, as you see us Jungians are, these uh, supreme ec uh, introverts, right? As you'll see at the reception in the wine and cheese <laughs> a little bit later. And so we, we need some great meaning to get us in there to actually talk to people. This is one, a quote from some of my papers that ties in with what Sherry's talking about. Listening analytically is not listening just to what is said, but listening to what is just below the surface waiting to be said. This is kind of a hallmark of the type of work and the structure of analysis that I'm talking about. This would be the stranger that she's saying. We actually just don't want to be talking about what we already know, but what's trying to come in, the part that we don't know, that we're afraid of being uh, known, that part that would lead to some surprise. Thirdness. So this is a topic sort of seemed to be near and dear to Jung's heart. I uh, went through the entire collected works and, and gathered some of his ideas on thirdness. So the uh, ideas here, certainly coming from a philosophical background in terms of Socrates and Aristotle and Kant and Marx, the idea of the dialectic of sort of two things in contrast and a third, third thing forming. So here's one of his first kind of descriptions of the third. The confrontation of the two positions generates a tension charged with energy and creates a living third thing, not a logical stillbirth in accordance with the principle of tertium non datur, but a movement out of the suspension between opposites, a living birth that leads to a new level of being a new situation. This comes out of his work of the transcendent function. This is the time that he's writing the, uh, and painting the pictures in the Red Book. And so his idea was like this tension of the opposites and the only way kind of through a dilemma Tertium nad dator means the third is not given. It's a logical kind of consequence. Uh, 